Hello world, my name is Andy Silvers and this is a quick review of the HP ZBook Fury 15 G8. All right, my name is Andy Silvers. I am an author, YouTuber, and filmmaker. Uh, if you want to help support the channel, please check out my books. I have three published books for all ages. Uh, from uh, the youngest kids, for ages 3 to 6, I have The Very Colorful Caterpillar. For ages 8 to 12, I have The Coming of Age Story, Red Sprites and Blue Jets. And for teens and adults, I have the contemporary fantasy, Solomon Grando vs. the Jupiter Witch. All are available on Amazon.com and Barnes and & Noble, and all have at least 4.8 out of 5 stars. Check them out at the link in the video description. Alright, so the HP ZBook Fury is the laptop I have in front of me. It is HP's highest end mobile workstation laptop and in fact HP's highest end laptop class. It's the ZBook at the top followed by the EliteBook, the ProBook, the Spectre, the Envy. There's a couple laptops in the middle in there like the Omen which is a gaming laptop series and the Victus which is another gaming laptop series but suffice it to say if you want the top quality and not necessarily performance but we'll get to that but definitely HP's top overall product is going to be the ZBook range. I personally own the ZBook Fury 15 G8. I have been using it for roughly a month, month and a half at this point and I have some thoughts. So this laptop is very good. I really like it overall. Uh, I don't regret my purchase of it at all. I got it on Black Friday last year so I got it at a huge discount so be aware of that. Um, but the laptop that I purchased came with a Core i7-11800H, 8 core, 16 thread CPU. Uh, it actually came with 8 gigs of RAM, but I upgraded it to 32. Uh, and it comes with the NVIDIA RTX A3000 mobile laptop GPU with 6 gigs of dedicated video memory. Uh, it's GD GDDR6 video memory. So it is not the highest spec ZBook you can get, but it is a very quality premium device with plenty of horsepower for most tasks. Now the first thing I want to do is talk about performance and I want to talk a little bit about gaming because a lot of people in the comments of my old ZBook videos asked about gaming. The simple answer is no. The HP ZBook uh, Fury lineup is simply, is simply not designed for gaming. It's just not intended for that kind of use. It can game, but it is not really designed for it. So the GPU is going to be slightly lower wattage than an equivalent 30 series GPU. Uh, just so you're aware, in a GPU uh, in, this, in this segment, the A series in this laptop is a mobile GPU, not a desktop class GPU. Uh, but second off, it's Ampere architecture, which is NVIDIA's latest, greatest architecture for the GPUs. It's the same basic arch architecture you would find in a 3060, 3070, 3080. But it's been modified for workstation use. And that means it has drivers and support for workstation tasks like Autodesk, Maya, Blender, video editing, uh, CAD work, etc. It's just designed for the kind of work that I do more often than not. However, I know a lot of you wonder about gaming. And the answer is, it is good for gaming, but it is not great for gaming. Um, the simple answer is if you want a crazy powerful laptop for gaming, from HP anyway, get the HP Omen 17T. However, if you have a, if you have a lot more money to spend, consider getting a Razer Blade 15 or 17. Uh, the Omen is uh, particularly uh, compelling because it has a 330 watt power brick, which is more than some desktops. This laptop has a large power brick, but not quite 330 watts. It's about 200 watts. And the sad thing about this computer is that no matter which uh, GPU and CPU combo you get, you cannot get more than um, uh, 200 watts for the power brick. You can't. It's not, it's not an option, at least not right now. And that's a problem because there are some GPUs and CPUs in here, like the i9-11950H and the uh, Quadro, well, it's not called the Quadro anymore, but the, the A5000 with 16 gigs of VRAM that could benefit from more wattage, like the uh, equivalent... Uh, uh, laptop workstations from say Lenovo and Dell that often come with up to around 240 watt, 230 watt-ish power bricks. The ZBook does not have that even as an option. 
and that does genuinely limit its performance. That does not mean it isn't good, but it's not the best. So take a look here at a couple of games that I played. I'm not an expert gamer, but take a look at some of the games that I played and check out the frame rates. All right, let's take a quick look at some gaming footage. I am not using OBS or some other screen recorder during any of it because I wanted to make sure that the results are unaltered and as fair and honest as possible. I even turned off Windows Smart Screen in the background to prevent anything uh, from taking up CPU resources other than the game itself. All right, I'm beginning with a game called Warframe, which is a pretty demanding game with some uh, pretty substantial 3D graphics and imagery. So in 4K, I averaged around 70 to 80 FPS. Uh, and then I ran the same test again in Warframe in 1080p. Uh, that's how I did all these tests. So every single video game test, it's really simple and quick. They're all at high maximum detail settings. And I simply changed the resolution and that was it. So with Warframe, I got... Um, about 70 to 80 FPS in 4K, and I averaged around 170 FPS or so in um, 1080p. The next game I played, or quote unquote played, is Apex Legends. I really didn't even play the game so much as walk around in the open world. Obviously, the frames will be a little bit lower if you're actually uh, playing them in a more serious uh, part of the game. But this is very much, in my opinion, a sightseeing game, especially early on. It's a very beautiful game. And in 4K, I was able to average around 60 to 70 FPS. So we're seeing a consistent 60-ish to 70 FPS on this laptop with the uh, RTX A3000 GPU. Uh, remind you, it has 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. So not too shabby. And uh, on a screen that's 15 inches, there's really no reason to play any of these games in 4K, but I think it's worth showing you so you have an idea of what the maximum results can look like. All right, in Apex Legends, I switched to 1080p, and you'll see that the footage is obviously a lot smoother because it is running at around 130 to 150 FPS, depending on uh, what exactly it is that I'm doing. So that is a pretty good uh, frame rate, and that is much closer to the frame rate of the actual display panel. So you're definitely looking good in 1080p on the ZBook. <sighs> now, where do I begin with CSGO? CSGO is the last game that I tried, and it was kind of a nightmare. Because first off, the game would just shut down. It would just freeze up on me constantly. And so if anyone in the comments has any idea why um, CSGO is doing that or if it happens uh, often where the game crashes on you, uh, please let me know because I had to restart the computer to get it to work. Um, as far as frame rates, in uh, 1080p they were a little bit inconsistent, but at high details and high settings across the board, the, the frame rates averaged around 100 FPS. So a little bit more sometimes, a little bit less, but roughly in the 100 FPS ballpark, which I would say is a pretty good showing for 4K. In 1080p, the frame rates um, were quite a bit higher. Uh, in some cases, I was even able to get up to 200, 250, even close to 300 FPS. So that is a very good showing, and this is yet again another game where 1440p would probably be the sweet spot. 4K gaming on most laptops is going to be kind of a challenge anyway, but I felt it was worth showing you just to demonstrate the possibilities. The last thing I want to know is a really interesting glitch that occurred in CSGO uh, where somehow I managed to get the game to glitch out where you can actually see through, like when I moved the mouse around, you could actually see through the uh, geometry. Again, the video shows it best. It is the, it is the weirdest thing I have ever seen. Like, you can just see through the ground. I can move around in 3D space. It doesn't look like I'm playing a video game. To me, this looks like what happens when you're creating a 3D animation and you're sort of acting like a digital camera and you can see the entire scene. It's, it's very odd. Either way, the frame rates were, in fact, good, and I did consult people who do game more than I do, and they said that the frame rates were pretty, pretty good, actually, uh, which makes sense. A lot of people right now, particularly with the GPU shortage that's still lingering, I'd say, uh, they're having difficulty getting um, good GPUs, even in laptops, because it's just very expensive, money is tight, it's just not something that's easy to do. This laptop is not designed for gaming, but it will game pretty well after hours. 
So I have done a number of benchmarks on this computer. Uh, to start off with, I did Cinebench R23. And the first time I did it, I actually got a, a surprising score of 12,089, which is rather substantial. However, in all of the following attempts, I was never able to quite get that same score again. I got around 11,500, sometimes low 11,000, but that is pretty good. I should note that HP has a laptop with basically the same equivalent specs as this, but um, with a different body design called the HP ZBook Studio uh, G8. That laptop is very good, but I didn't get it because of the simple fact that it's not near as upgradable as this, and the fact that it just cannot go deliver the same performance as this because this laptop uh, has a vapor chamber uh, to cool the CPU and GPU just like the studio but this one is a lot thicker and has larger fans making it much easier for this device to actually cool the hardware that's in it. In fact, on that note, I would highly recommend if you're looking to buy this laptop uh, or even the ZBook Studio really consider not buying the top CPU and GPU even if you could afford it, especially CPU. Because in my experience and watching a lot of other YouTubers who have the same laptop or similar laptop, this CPU should be able to perform well. And in theory, the i9 or even Xeon option available for this should be able to perform better, right, in theory. But they don't. In the real world, the i9 uh, 11950H and Xeon uh, W11995M or something uh, don't perform better than this CPU in most tasks that I've seen. Um, they perform worse and I think the reason for that is probably in part because of the power limitation. They're not getting enough power that they want. But here's the thing. I think the CPUs are heating up too fast. They're just heating up way too fast and so the computer can't keep up. So the performance ends up getting uh, reduced because of, of uh, thermal throttling, as you're probably aware, and it makes the laptop look worse. So if you can, if you, if you think about it, consider getting this computer and, like I said, the Studio G8 as well with an i7 uh, instead of an i9 or even the Xeon option because I really don't think you're going to see a performance benefit by going to an i9 in this design. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. As for some other tests, you can see on screen a couple of benchmarks. I did uh, the Unigine Heaven benchmark. I did the uh, Cinebench R23 benchmark and a few other benchmarks. I also did some tests for the SSD speeds, uh, which is kind of useless because none of the SSDs in here right now actually came with the computer, like not a single one of them. Uh, as for the screen, it comes with an incredible 4K uh, HDR screen. It is not OLED, but it goes up to around 600 nits. And it has a 120 hertz refresh rate, which is a reason why you might want to use this for gaming after hours. As for the battery life, the battery life is not amazing, but it is pretty good. The battery is very big at about 94 watt hours, which is close to the maximum you can take on an airplane. Um, it has a pretty good battery life at around 7 hours, 6 to 7 hours with light use. Uh, if you push it harder then obviously it'll be closer to 4, 3 to 4 hours in my, in my experience and testing. As for upgradability, this laptop is in fact the king of upgradability. It has so many slots. Uh, first off, getting inside is pretty much the easiest I've ever seen in a laptop that isn't from 2005. So basically, you flip the computer over, you literally unlatch a clip, boom, it is open. Now you can get to stuff. Now the battery, same thing. You unlatch some clips, boom, battery's out. It's that easy, which means if you wanted to buy a second battery for traveling like where you're away from an, a wall outlet, you could do that. If you're a wildlife photographer who needs to edit in Lightroom on the go, that could be a great solution for you. Uh, the battery is removable. There are four SSD slots. Uh, one of them is under the keyboard, uh, which means you have to actually follow HP's instructions to properly remove the keyboard. Be careful as there are fragile ribbon cables. Uh, there are two RAM slots also under the keyboard, so be aware of that as well. HP po populates those RAM slots first when you configure your ZBook. And then there are two more SSD slots available inside the computer underneath the bottom cover. Those are the easiest to get to. Uh, be aware that it's a little sneaky. So basically, uh, there's um, two options. You can either put in two M.2 SSDs uh, basically underneath the battery, or you can put in either a 2.5 inch hard drive or 2.5 inch SSD like the Samsung uh, 870 uh, Cuvo SSDs I think it is. Um, so you have options which is really nice. You have a lot of options for storage. Uh, like I said there are four RAM slots which is a lot of RAM slots. I have mine configured with 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. 
The Wi-Fi card is easily accessible and upgradable. And there's a WAN card slot option as well for if you need cellular connectivity, which you might if you are a business professional. As for the keyboard, there are apparently a couple of different options. If you buy this in the European markets, you will get a slightly different configuration. Uh, I bought mine in America, in the United States, and so I got the sort of standard American uh, QWERTY keyboard configuration with the, I guess you could say, regular sized enter and shift key. Uh, there's also a Canadian version, which is exactly the same as the American version, except the A key says A. The audio is tuned by Bang & Olufsen, a frequent collaborator of HP. The audio is pretty good. It's not amazing. The uh, volume does get, in fact, very loud, and the bass, I'd say, is pretty solid considering the size of the speakers, which is noteworthy because the laptop is just over an inch thick. So like I've said, it is a thick boy laptop. It is thick with three Cs, am I right? It is not a thin little laptop, but uh, that is not um, unreasonable. That is what a lot of professionals want. They basically want a desktop on the go. And so having all those ports, having that thickness, having the RAM slots, having the SSD slots is exactly what they're looking for, and it's not a bother in any way. If you are a video editor, animator, uh, professional photo editor, like high-end photo editor, if you are a programmer, 3D modeler, CAD person, uh, you generally know who you are. If you need ISV certified software to work properly and, if, and quickly on this device, then the HP ZBook laptop range, and specifically the Fury 15 and 17, are for you. Uh, I would highly recommend this laptop. I love it. It's not perfect, but it is very, very good. You have to think. You have to understand that a lot of professionals aren't necessarily looking for them the most powerful barrier-breaking computer. And in fact, HP knows this, which is why they didn't include a 330-watt power brick with this unit, even though they already make one for the Omen. Uh, and I think the idea behind this is that Companies who are buying these want them to just work. They don't want to have to worry about techno jargon. They don't want to have to worry about put, even putting in RAM themselves, even though I did. Um, professionals like that just want a device like this to work. The reason they buy something like this is because even though it doesn't have the latest technology, it's not pushing boundaries in terms of what a laptop can do, it's stable, it's consistent, it's easily serviceable. All right, that's been about it. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. I really do answer the vast majority of questions that I get about computers. I love to help people out. All right, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please like and subscribe. Tell your friends about the video. And uh, please check out my books on Amazon. It really helps me out as an author when you do that. I have three books, like I mentioned, uh, for all the different age, range, age ranges, several different genres, so please check those out in the link in the video description.